Magic Detective, starring the world's greatest magician, Blackstone. He tells you the inside story of the Midway Robberies. And right after the story, Blackstone will explain tricks that you yourself can perform. Reveal the guarded secrets of the world's greatest living magician. Stand by for Blackstone, Magic Detective. What under the sun is that thing over there in the corner, Rhoda? Shh, Don Hancock, you're speaking of the man I love. Looks like a cross between a mummy and a suit of armor. Oh, my feelings are hurt. I think he's beautiful. Well, maybe I would, too, if you'd uh, get over your girlish raptures and tell me what it's supposed to be. That thing, as you call him, is Ajab Jr., a character very dear to my heart. Oh, stop it, Rhoda. What is it? Ajab Jr. is the man I love, and he's an automatic chess player. Ajab, the automatic chess player. I've heard of one of those, but I've never seen one. Does it work? Of course. Does that dummy really play chess? Oh, I'll thank you not to call the love of my life a dummy. Sometimes, Rhoda, I want to wring your neck. Oh, careful. Ajab Jr. wouldn't like that. He's very particular about who brings my neck. Rhoda Brent, you... What's the matter, Don? Rhoda teasing you? Oh, I was asking her about that figure over there, the automatic chess player, and she... Ajab Jr.? Yes, Ajab Jr. We're all very fond of him. Oh, good grief. You too? I'm sorry, Don. Ajab helped us solve a crime once, and we've got sort of attached to him. You'd be too if he'd done as much for you as he has for us. Maybe, but I still wouldn't think he was beautiful. Oh, it's an acquired taste, Don. Like olive. What's the story, Mr. Blackstone? Or is it one that is so full of magician's secrets that you can't tell it? Oh, I can tell this one all right. But uh, first, come over here and meet Ajab Jr. Well, I still think Ajab Jr. is mighty plain. What does he do, Blackstone? Can he really play chess? So the story goes. Now, see, I, I will slide back the door here in the pedestal. Ooh, look at all the machinery inside that guy. And uh, then I'll slide the other door on this side. Wow, more machinery. Hey, with all that stuff, he ought to be able to play a terrific game of chess. Uh, you'd think so. Uh, how does it work? What makes it play chess? That's part of the story. Tell him, Blackstone. Very well, I will. A friend of mine, Jed Tremor, ran the midway at an amusement park not far from here. One night, Rhoda and I were driving out to see him. Is this trip business, Blackstone, or have you suddenly developed a yen to see an amusement park? Business, Rhoda, and pretty serious business. Well, what do you mean? You remember Jed Tremor? Uh huh. Funny little man, very serious, rather fussy. Well, don't tell me a fuss budget like that has committed a crime, Blackstone. Mm, no, no, not Tremor. But crimes, robberies, that are, that is. I've been committed on his midway, and it's giving the place a bad name. People are staying away by the hundreds. Any idea who's committing these crimes? Well, everything points to a gypsy fortune teller he's got out there, a uh, Madame La Belle. Well, do you think she's the guilty one? She must be, and yet... And yet what? Every time a robbery's done, Madame La Belle has a perfect alibi. It proves that she couldn't do the stealing. Golly, it sounds funny, Blackstone. Mm, it is funny. Well, here we are. Tremor. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Oh, things have been simply dreadful. I'm afraid I'll have to go out of business unless something can be done. Oh, dear me, I don't know what to do at all. Not no, at all. No. Easy, at all. easy there, Tremor. Take it easy. Come on, Rhoda, let's go inside. I thought he wasn't going to stop talking long enough to let us get out of the car. Oh, dear me, I should have been more thoughtful. Yes, indeed, I should, but for my own troubles, you know. Of course, that's no excuse. Well, uh, come with me, Blackstone, and Miss... Uh, Miss uh, well, we'll go inside, shall we? So, a 
At last, I have the honor to meet Madame LaBelle, the great fortune teller. Uh, thank you so very much. It is privilege to meet world-famous Blackstone. Thank and you. And a lovely lady. Oh, how do you do? Let me read your palm, little lady. Ah, I can see great things for you. Great adventures. Love. No, thanks. Give me back my hand. <laughs> Some other time, perhaps. But right now... Please. Right now, you come to investigate the so unfortunate robberies. Is it not so? What can you tell us about them, Madame LaBelle? Nothing. Nothing at all. It so happens that every time one of these regrettable robberies has occurred, I have been elsewhere. Mm. Talking to Tremor, perhaps, or to one of the other people here on the Midway. Tremor tells me that each of the robberies has occurred to someone whose fortune you've just read. Is that correct? That is correct. They're not coincidence, is it not? Very. Did you foretell disaster in any of the palms you saw? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Ah, what's that? Oh, my bracelet! My diamond bracelet! It's gone! Uh, uh, it's gone! Quick, this way. The scream is coming from over near the gate. Oh, I was standing here, right here, and suddenly my bracelet was gone. I beg your pardon, madam, but I may be able to help you. The police. I want the police. My diamond bracelet. Now, try to be a little calmer, madam, and tell Mr. Blackstone just what happened. Yeah, well, I was standing here, right here by this automaton, and all of a sudden, just like that, my bracelet is gone. <coughs> Sure, it didn't slip off your wrist. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear! Oh, another robbery! I, I can't stand any more of this. My nerves are oh dear! I you see, Mister Blackstone, always I have an alibi just like this one. Too bad, is it not? It is always the custom, I believe, to suspect gypsy fortune teller. Looks like this time one fortune teller is in the clear, doesn't it, Blackstone? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, uh. Yes. Yes. Of course. You're not even listening. Are you? Are you not going to try and help me retrieve my bracelet? After all, I should think you could do better than simply turn and stare at that automaton. This is an automatic chess player, isn't it, Tremor? Yes, that automaton is one of the most popular acts on the whole midway. Mm, I see. Where's the man who runs it? Oh, well, that's one of the most fortunate things about the chess player. It runs itself. No labor problems. All I have to do is move it round from place to place and set up the chessboard. I wind it, of course, from time to time, but well, that's all. I've always been intensely interested in these, Tremor. Intensely interested. This is an outrage. My diamond bracelet is gone, and no one pays the slightest bit of attention. I'm going for the police. There's no need for you to rush for the police, madam. My assistant, Miss Brent, will be glad to go for you. But Blackstone... I, I hoped you'd be able to keep the police out of here, Blackstone. I hoped that you, my friend, would be able to help me. I suppose, Blackstone, that while I'm kiting off after the police, you're going to be sitting here playing a game of chess. This is a very peculiar way of acting, Mr. Blackstone. I am going to play a game of chess while Rhoda goes for the police. But you can't do that. My business, our friendship. You just can't play chess, Mr. Blackstone. You can't. Oh, but I can can and I will. You know, Tremor, nothing like a game of chess to settle the nerves. Wind up your automatic chess player, Tremor. I'm ready to play. Well, I don't get it, Mr. Blackstone. I know you wouldn't let your friend down like that, and yet... And yet you feel I did. Well, tell I... Him. Tell him, Blackstone. We don't want his opinion of you to sink that low. I knew a great deal about what Tom had done. A great deal. And one of the things I knew without a shadow of a doubt is that there's no such thing as an automatic chess player. Yes, but Ajab <laughs> Jr., he's one. He is a mechanical figure, yes, but he cannot play chess. Chess is a very intricate and elaborate and thoughtful game, as we all know. No one has ever perfected a figure that could automatically respond to all the millions of possible moves in a chess game. But all that mechanism inside the figure. Phony. Those doors that I slid open are so constructed as to hide an open space where a man could hide. Could and does, Blackstone. That's right. Could and does. You see, Don, that's the secret of an automatic chess player. But the robberies who committed them. The man inside the chess player. He was in league with Madame LaBelle, the gypsy fortune teller. And would steal, they steal the jewels from the rich women who came to consult her. Mm -hmm. And you played that game of chess to hold the man inside the automaton while Rhoda went for the police, is that it? That's it exactly, Dom. And so another trick was solved by magic. Well, what kind of a gag are you going to pull on us now, Blackstone? A handkerchief trick ought to be appropriate, shouldn't it? That could be taken two ways, Don. Well, we'll see about that. I'll have to borrow a match from someone. Oh, that ought to be easy enough. Here you are. No, I mean an ordinary kitchen match made of wood. Oh, will this do? Oh, yes, that's fine. What's Thanks. up? I'm going to wrap this match up in a handkerchief, let one of you break it, and when I open the handkerchief, the match will be whole again. 
As good as new. Oh, that's impossible. On the contrary. Now, just you watch. Here's my own handkerchief. I'll shake it out so you can see there's nothing concealed inside of it. It's good enough for me. Now, Rhoda, place the match in the center of the handkerchief. Fold it over several times so you'll be sure that it can't fall out. All right. How's that? That's fine. Now you're sure that the match is there. Now, may I have it, please? Oh, here. You can feel the match stick through the folds of the handkerchief, can't you? Here, try it yourself. Mm. Yeah, I can feel it. Now, break the match in half while I hold the rest of the handkerchief. Break it? That's right. All right, Don. I'll give you the handkerchief. Shake it loose and you'll find your match just as good as new. There it is, all in one piece. But how in the world did you ever do it? I'll be right back to tell you in a moment. Blackstone, we haven't guessed the secret of that one yet. Well, as usual, it's very simple once you know how. Oh, that's what you always say. It's all in the handkerchief. Really? Yes. Did you notice anything particular about this handkerchief? Well, it has a lovely deep hem, I see. And uh, what else did you notice? Uh, look carefully. Well, well, there's some loose threads in the hem. That's right. In this trick, you fool your public by putting a dummy match in the hem before you start. Oh, I get it. And when I take the handkerchief in order to let you break the match in the center, I see to it that it's the one in the hem that you break by just uh, manipulating the folds a bit. Then when the handkerchief is open, out drops the one I put in the center. That's pretty good. And the best part of it all is it works every time. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you like that trick. And now, until next time... This is Blackstone saying good magic and goodbye. Be with us next time when the world's greatest living magician, Blackstone, tells us the story of The Frozen Lady and explains more tricks that you yourself can perform. Listen in again to Blackstone, the world's greatest living magician. Ah!